Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A&P today. Specifically, we're going to check out the hand bones. That would be the carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. So, let's see it. There are eight bones that form the carpus, or the wrist, and they're set in two rows of four, but it's a little bit tricky to see them, so I'm going to show them very clearly here, I hope. In the first row, we have scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. And so if you want to do these, it goes like this. Here is scaphoid, here is lunate, here is, I got to be real careful here because there's two bones like glued together there. That's triquetrum. And then right here, sticking out, remember that's the anterior view, that's pisiform right there. Let me take the ink off and I'll just show you again. This one here, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. There's the, the bottom row, if you want to call it that. It's the proximal row, but on this picture, and most images you get of the hand, you're going to see these on the bottom. Do the same thing with the others now. Trapezium. Trapezoid. Capitate. And hamate is right here in the background. It's hard to see him sometimes all the way because he's obscured by pisiform on the other side. Yes, I know there's a lot of tries here and traps. It's a little tricky. Let's try it on the other side. You want to do that? So let me change to this color and go to the palm over here now. Let's try it again. Now notice the thumb has been flipped. So we're looking at the back of the hand now. We're still going to see everything, but it's going to be mirror image. So let's try it again. Scaphoid is here, lunate, triquetrum, and this one is hard to see peasy. All you can see is a little tip of it sticking out because remember that juts out to the front right underneath your pinky bones. So there's the first row and I come back over to do the next. Trapezium is here. T, then another trapezoid is here behind the next digit, and then capitate is here behind the next digit, and then hamate is here behind both of these two final digits, four and five. All right, so that's how to name the carpal bones. When you get to the metacarpals, it's super simple. So let me switch back to white. If we label like we're supposed to label, the thumb is called digit one. And yes, you can call the thumb the pollux if you want to get fancy, but most people just refer to it as the thumb. So I can label the thumb one, and then I can label the others two, three, four, and five. So we would call those digits one, two, three, four, and five, where thumb is one and pinky is five. Now to name the metacarpals, first of all, you have to see them. And know where to draw the boundary. There they are right off of the carpals are the metacarpals. And then you simply name them as it says. This is metacarpal 1. This is metacarpal 2. This is metacarpal 3. This is metacarpal 4. And you guessed it, that is metacarpal 5. Some people would say, you know, the third metacarpal or the fifth metacarpal the metacarpal of the second digit or the metacarpal of the fourth digit, something like that. So there are ways you can change up the words, but at the end of the day, you just call them metacarpal one, two, three, four, and five. So when we get to the phalanges or the fingers, we can do the same thing. First of all, let's draw a line here to say where they are. Okay, we know these are metacarpals down here, fine, and these are carpals in the wrist. So we see the phalanges or the digits. And we can name them, of course, the digit one, digit two, digit three, digit four, and digit five is the pinky. We can do that still. 
Notice here, if we counted, there's only going to be 14 of these phalanges. There's not 15, meaning all of them have three except for one. So digits 2 through 5 have three phalanges. One is called the distal, and then the middle, and then the proximal, and that is positionally the same as you've learned a long time ago with anatomical direction. So let's try some real quick. If I were to put a box around that bone and say, name this bone, your answer would be that is the middle phalanx of digit 4. That would be a really good answer. What if I put a box around this bone? It said, what is that bone? Well, that is the proximal phalanx of digit 2. So well, where's the distal one? Well, this one is the distal phalanx of digit 2. And I'm using the word phalanx down here in pink, you can see. Phalanx is the singular for phalanges. It's not a phalange like I hear a lot of people try to call it. So let's try one more just for fun. Over here is the middle phalanx of digit 5. And here on the tip would be the distal phalanx of digit 5, and so on. The only trick is the thumb again. So remember, there is no middle. The thumb has no middle. So this one here is a proximal phalanx of digit 1, and this is the distal phalanx of digit 1. There is no middle phalanx. A lot of people try to call this bone one of the phalanges because they see three there, and it's kind of an autopilot answer, but don't, don't get stuck there. All right. If you enjoyed that, check out more in the series, but thanks for watching that one. See you next time. Bye-bye.